You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam and I'm your host, and today's episode will be brought to you after these words from our sponsors. From the makers of the Y-Wing and the X-Wing, the next advancement in personal spaceship technology, the Hashtag Wing. Now with 100% more wings, and there's more. The Hashtag Wing wings fold in even more places, giving you 100% more fold per wing. That's 100% more adaptable to the variances of space travel. And there's more. It even comes with a socket for a second astromech. Now twice the beep per boop. We're only charging 100% extra, so contact your dealer now. The Hashtag Wing. Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 24 of the Cold Fire Chronicles. My name is Adam and I am your GM and I am joined around the virtual table by... Hi, my name is Ed Fortune. I play the character of Baron. He is a human seeker, hunter, atari striker. His emotional strength is justice and his emotional weakness is cruelty. Hi, I'm Mim. I play Lassa. She is a human sentinel artisan. Her emotional strength is her curiosity, but her weakness is obsession. Hi, I'm Ross. I play Agatha, a Morylan warrior aggressor colossus, whose emotional strength is his pride and whose weakness is his obsession. Hi, I'm Mikey. I play Jiren. He's a chismistic advisor. His emotional strength is his boundless enthusiasm and his emotional weakness is his boundless recklessness. Our camera opens up on the ice moon of Daxos. Flurries of snow occlude our vision, painting the landscape white. Through the snow, we suddenly see the shadow of a large ship landed a few hundred feet away from where their mentor once lived. The gangplank is down, and from the lights pouring out of the cargo hold, we see our heroes stepping out into the driving snow, bracing themselves, and then heading onwards. It is very, very cold out here, players, and the flurries of snow are making it hard to see too far ahead of you. But you know where you're going. You have been here many, many times before, and though you've been away for a long time, your feet seem to know the way, through muscle memory or something else, you know the path you need to tread to get to Pijak's door. Mim, you still had two advantages left from your decryption, which you um, didn't use on locating the other Stormtrooper patrols. I have a suggestion for those advantages if you would like to hear it. I am always open to having some inspiration. And that is this. While you are near to the ship, your data slate is still picking up from the encryption program that's being run by the foolhardy gambit, which means for a little bit longer, you will still get transcriptions of any nearby encrypted Imperial chatter. That seems really sensible. <laughs> Okie okay, dokie. Okay. I like that. It means if they start coming for us, I'll get a bit of a heads up. I would like to point out that whilst it is bitterly cold and biting, and everybody is wrapped up as warm as they can. Once again, Duran is wearing his normal clothes and is entirely unbothered by this. Much past the fact that he's come from an ice planet, it's not a chiss thing that's going on here. He is just unaffected. I'm almost like, you know the end of Ghostbusters when Venkman is just not covered in, um, in the Marshmallow Man and he's like, how are you? Fine. He's fine. The cold seems to be bothering you in your warm clothes more than it's bothering him. I would like to, now that I know what I'm expecting, I'd like to open my mind out again to the Force and see if I can find the cat. Now that we're on the soil and we've kind of we've talked about the collar and stuff like that, I'm actually going to see if I can find the cat. Okay, so that's a seek roll. Yep. It's not an imposed seek roll, just roll your, uh, your Force die. And remember, there is always a dark side pip available for you if you want it. I get to roll two dice. I've rolled two light side points, one on each die. This is really a waste of a good force roll that occurs to me, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's enough for me to get a general impression as to where Captain Sparkles is. This is where I discover that, that it's actually a Sith Lord. <laughs> Captain Sparkles is the key. You cast your mind out into the storm, 
and everything around you goes dark. And you can see again the branching pathways of possibility and of prey and the threads that link you to all things. And even though you're managing to draw upon the light side to power this, to send out the impulses, it is like pushing through rotten fabric around here. There is just this, you feel grimy opening yourself up like this. It's like I'm pushing on a strand of light. If you see what I mean, so like I keep pulling across the strand of light, and in a kind of poetic special effects way, as the kind of the camera pulls out, you can see like snow patterns, kind of fractal patterns, kind of like almost like snowflakes, as a kind of like my mind is kind of seeking, and that kind of astral form of Beren. He's almost like cat like in, in this kind of form, where he's just kind of like this set of seeking eyes. But I'm assuming that the captain is a bright light. The captain is indeed a bright light. It is a constellation of stars in a galaxy of darkness. But you pick up on that light, that familiar light, that contented, haughty, arrogant light, as with all Lothcats. And you follow it down, and you seize onto it, and then your vision expands out, showing you where the captain is. They are on the bridge of the Coldfire's Mercy. The ship is dark, but the life support systems are still humming quietly. You can't quite make out where the ship itself is, other than it is somewhere cavernous and cold. It seems familiar though, and it is not too far away, below you at an angle. You can see Captain Sparkles quite clearly. They are in their basket on top of Tugger's flat head. Tugger doesn't appear to be active, however. And as your kind of your your vision circles Captain Sparkles, who seems quite happy, he's curled up, he's asleep, you can see there's a blaster hole been put through Tugger. And putting all of these sensations together, the pull of the thread, the feel of where he is, the direction of travel and knowing the topography, it looks like Coldfire's Mercy has once again been parked in the hangar bay it spent so long resting in by Pijak's house behind the frozen waterfall. You snap back to yourself. As we get into the snow again. Well, I know where Captain Sparkles is, and I know what's happened to Tugger. Okay. Good. Where? What? The captain's on the ship, where we found the ship before. It's been put back to where we we once stole it. Tugger's uh, worse for wear, though. He's been a shot, poor thing. Hmm. I can sense the cat, though. And Sparkles is safe. Sparkles is safe. Hungry. Never been fed. I think that might be a lie. Okay. I guess we won't have to explain why we took the tracker out of Tugger if he's been, you know, somewhat destroyed. I think there's a big hole in him, from what I can see. I mean, I'm, I was seeing through through the captain's eyes, so... We'll see what we can do about it later. But we, we know where the ship is. It's, it's where we found it the first time. So we've got two ships that we can use for an escape. If we can't get to one, we probably can get to the other. Yeah. This place is rotten with the force. And I mean rotten. It feels like you can taste blood in your mouth, in your soul. Yeah, I, I get that. Many, many things have died here. I'd like to use a force power as well, if I may. I, I would like to use force sense. Just the basics, just around us. If like Just to keep an awareness of the people around me at the moment, because the last time we walked into slightly dodgy force territory we all got very separated in a, in a temple not too long ago <laughs> yeah roll me your force die as well then for the moment that's one dark side point I'm hmm technically two dark side points yes technically <laughs> yes I mean it feels like this is what we're going to be waiting through at the minute if I can use hmm, if I use one point is that that involves some strain doesn't it either way yes what one strain one conflict well I want to keep us together I don't want us to get picked off like we did last time we walked into something well, I've marked up your conflict. If you mark up your strain, please. Mm-hmm. And yes, you open your senses. So this is the first time Agatha's has used this power. And I can tell you that the only people nearby within the range of your, your new nascent sense are the crew of the foolhardy gambit, the eight of you. Mm. But what does that feel like as Agatha opens himself up? To the dark side. 
Yes, obviously, it's, it's going to be quite a muddy thing. My take on it at, the, at this point is that Agatha's reaching out with sort of his general battle awareness, like, you know, trying to keep aware of his surroundings. But this is something new that he's tapped into recently where he's trying to, where he's just feeling for, you know, who, who is in this nearby proximity. There'll be a, a sort of sense of the, the warmth and the movements of the people around him, but it won't be able to tell him... I mean, at this point, it's, it's simply just re- reading, you know, the sense of life around him. It's just the, the people near in, in his proximity. It's not really, you know, reading their mood or their health or anything like that. It's just a general, you know, these people are nearby. These are the people who are behind me, out of my line of sight. Okay. So, yeah, you um, you head off out into the snow. Lassa, a transcribed message pings on your data slate. Paraphrasing slightly, the message has gone out that... The Padawans have been sighted. What are your orders? Then there's a discussion that there are more of you than just the four that were clearly expected. And the message received back is, the four Padawans, as described, are to be brought to me alive. The rest, I wash my hands of. We've got to get undercover. We've got to get undercover now. And I think we're going into initiatives, please. Can I please have vigilance checks from everybody? No difficulty. All right, that's two success and one advantage for Lassa's vigilance. I don't have a great deal of vigilance or cool. I always roll really well. Three successes or one advantage. One success, two advantage for Agatha. So four successes, two of which are my light side pips, and three advantage. Now, remind me with... Let, in fact, let me bring up 4C, because there's, there's stuff you can spend those pips on for other people as well, isn't there? One pip you need to spend to actually activate the power. Yep. Which will give you a success. Yep. One pip you can spend to give a success to everybody that's engaged with you. Yep. With magnitude. And they will also get defence boost as well. Yep, I'll do that. It's like an instinctive, like similar to where Agatha was kind of like groping and trying to the thing, but like I've suddenly just responded in a kind of like, like a spider sense flash. They're like it's it's not verbal in any way, shape, or form. It's like it's there. You're there. Time and space slows for for a very brief time, and it's quite clearly coming from from me. If you see what I mean, his controlled sense of mastered fear. So, it's going to be three players, an NPC, a player, and an NPC. And then, effectively, the rest of the crew, so from Igwil Jeblin and Prinkle, kind of will fit in where narratively appropriate stroke at the end of the initiative order, because I'm not juggling that many extra groups. And I'm flipping a dark side point, because this is effectively what's going to kick off the ambush. From ahead of you, through the snow, a flurry of blaster bolts are loosed. You can roughly make out at long range from you. There are shapes of stormtroopers wearing long uh, helmets that come down the shoulders. Ed, you will recognise these as snow troopers. They're in the, the proper cold weather gear. And in fact, as Lassa goes, get down, and that first round of, of fire comes from this concealed position, Throm takes three of the blaster bolts and just collapses to the ground with smoke rising from him. And then we go into initiative proper. PC. Allow me to reply? Yeah, I would like to go before they have another go, but I don't need to go first. Yep, go for it. Heavy rifle, I reply. Okay, looking through your scope, because you can start to pick out... Their thermal signatures are hard to pick out because the armour they're wearing, as well as protecting them from the cold, also masks some of their body signature. There appears to be two groups of four kind of loosely spread out near to where Pijak's house opening is and then another snow trooper who is wearing sergeant's insignia who is hunkered down behind the doorway and appears to be in communications yep officer first okay so it's at long range so that's three purple you will be taking two setback die from the weather conditions because though your scope allows you to pick them out it doesn't negate this is not what that scope is for yep you have a normal maneuver if you want to close a distance or Closing the distance won't take away a dice, though, will it? It will take away a purple, because you move to medium. I'll hustle and move to medium range. Is there, like, a rock or a bit of blown-up thing? Yeah, I think so, around here. Like a snowbank or a bit of the destroyed shuttle or that sort of stuff. 
I slide into what used to be some sort of landing apparatus. Oh, wow. Okay, Adam, Mm -hmm. that's 11 success. What? What? Jesus. 11 successes? Yep. Crikey. What dice were you rolling? Two yellow, three green, two forced dice, because that's how I'm set up. I've rolled two white and one white on my forced dice. So yeah, so you're pumping all that into successes as well. So it's eight normal successes and three four successes. Yeah. And the base damage of your rifle? Is ten. That's 21 damage, isn't it? Yeah. Do I just take his head off? You do. What does that look like? It's extremely calm. Like, he slides, he props, he aims... He sees the shot go in. There's a moment, and then he ducks down, and there's just a moment of, sorry, unlucky. And, like, the guy's still propped there. He's just slowly, surely slumps. Yeah. Next player character. Somebody else can go before me, quite happily. I mean, my thought is that Agatha's going to run forward and does what, do what he normally does, just grab hold of things and, you know, start hitting them. Well, they're at long range, so can you make it there? I'm going to move forward a range bracket and then I'm going to reach forward for the force. I'm either going to throw a grenade into that distance or I'm going to try and force manoeuvre them. I mean, grenades, uh, their range is short, so you probably have to make two moves up to spend some strain to get to short range. Right, okay. I don't know whether whether if you throw the grenades with force power, you can throw them further than you would normally, but... You can throw them using move... Mm. which would, because they're still at zero, to increase the range bands on your throw. Right, okay. I'm certainly going to use a manoeuvre to move forward. Yep, so that moves to medium range. Yeah, and then... Technically, it's a manoeuvre to draw the grenades. Okay, in that case, I can simply reach forward with the force. I'm going to see if I can reach a Stormtrooper soldier and throw them into one of the others, same way I did uh, on stopover. Yep, it will be a ranged attack using your discipline to throw them, and you roll your force die as part of this because you need to succeed on the attack as well as generate the force points to do it. Your difficulty is two purple for the range and two setback die for the snow, because that's still going to affect you being able to see and properly grab them. You've got three light side points in the pool if you want to uh, flip one to upgrade. I-, I would like to use one of those. Does anybody have an issue? Nobody's complaining? No. Nope. Two dark side pips, which I'm not wanting to use. Which you will have to use, otherwise you can't use the power. Right, okay. You will need to spend at least two pips to be able to move a silhouette one thing with Bob, and you will need to spend the third pip to have the range to do it because you're at medium range. So you will need to draw upon all of the dark side that's available to you to do this. All three pips. Okay, so there's three dark side pips available, otherwise the roll is two failure. Oh, did you fail the roll anyway? Yeah. Oh, well, in which case you don't need to draw upon the force, you just don't do it. Yeah. So at the minute I'm just raced forward and wasted a grenade. Well, not that I even thrown it. And a destiny point. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, well, so you reach forward, but whether it's the snow that's in your way, whether it's the power of the dark side that's over here, you just can't seem to get a grip on these snow troopers and and hurl them. This is the next player character before they start having turns. Okay. Are you all right, me going, uh, Mim? I'm all right. Lass doesn't really know what to do at the moment. Okay. (laughs) This is exactly what she didn't want. So, Jireni's going to move out out of from lean down and just see if they're still alive yeah from is the human and they are not they have three smoking blaster holes right through them i didn't really want to use this already he is going to he's a mook i know but i promised so he's going to lean down and he's going to put his hand on from and he's going to block out the sounds of the shouting and the battle and uh, and the blaster fire and he's just going to focus on the the holes he's going to try and coax him back he's going to try and bring him back to to the fight because we haven't we're not done we still have things to do and i promised that we would try to get everybody out of this alive so i'm going to use my mastery of healing it's going to be a heck of a roll but i'm going to use Knowledge is power. I'm going to try and bring him back. Ooh. <laughs> now, technically, I can bring him back right now, but that would be a lot of dark side, because that's free dark side on there. And I need four to bring him back. So I'd have to tap into the planet as well. Ooh. Do I really want somebody who is brought back by the dark side to be continuing on? Would it not be better to leave him to rest? But aren't you curious if you can do it? 
just to know if you can. I'm curious if I can do it, but do I do? <sighs> Jiren for a second thinks, would he want to be brought back through the dark side? The conflict, the problem, the negative energy of this is through him because essentially what he's going to be doing is pulling all of this power and then almost filtering it through himself to make something good happen with this badness. And I'll be honest, that's what a captain does. I'm going to spend four dark side points, Adam. Okay. And I'm going to bring back this very, very breakable mook and bring him back to life. So, take your strain yeah. and tell me what this feels like, what this looks like. It's a lot of dark side points. It's probably more than he's used since the orb. And it is so very unpleasant. It is taking the point of his death and almost winding back the clock. Just pulling the last few seconds of his life back to when he was still alive. Almost like the special effects they have with the Venom symbiote in the Venom thing with the black tendrils just flicking out and his wounds start nipping back together with this black ichor. It's horrendous. And Jiren just... He doesn't scream, but his jaw is that set of somebody who is screaming. And he pushes all of this dark energy from the surrounding area, and pushes it down into him, filtering it through his body to try and pull out all of this, this negativity, which he keeps for himself. And there's a few seconds, and he moves his hand. And there's still the holes there in his clothing, but everything else is fresh. And as he opens his eyes, he sees Juran, and Juran goes... Stay down. Whew. Throm coughs up a, a thick chunk of solidif of like gelatinous blood and looks into your eyes and there is this moment, this connection between you. And he nods as you say stay down and croaks out I ain't Captain. It is an NPC's turn. Agatha. Mm hmm You are exposed. You have charged in, you have reached out, and nothing has happened. One of these squads of snow troopers lowers their blasters at you, and the blue rings of stun shots cut through the falling snow. That is two successes, no advantage, no threat, which is 11 strain before your soak as these stun shots slam into you. Still standing, but that's a lot of strain. <laughs> Lassa. Mm hmm. Right. My weapons are all short range weapons. So I've got a bit of a problem. I'm going to yell out to everybody He wants us alive, but you don't care about anyone else except us four. Just so everyone's aware. Because that means that we can kind of shield them a bit if we want. Duren's gone to stand over somebody because he's just gone to help one of the wounded. I don't know that they were dead, dead, but it's. Yeah, he's kind of crouched over him, I mm. imagine, both presenting quite a low profile through the snow. Oberon's jumped behind uh, a piece of debris and is hunkered down with his rifle. Igwilv and Jeblin and Prinkle have all kind of taken cover behind the dropped gangplank of... Um, How far away am I from the ship? Just outside it. Okay. I'm going to move mm -hmm. back to the ship. Yep. To the guns. It will take you two manoeuvres to get into the gun turret, so you'll need to take two strain, but you can get there. I'll take that strain. Then for my action... Lock and load. It will be a one purple, two black gunnery check. Right. I do not have any skills in gunnery, but if I can do some covering fire, hopefully it'll be better. Well, it could be worse. It's a success, but two threat. Okay. The threat, tick up the sadness clock. Two more. You are halfway through your first sadness what? clock. The successes, however... This being a ship weapon, deals 60 damage to one squad of stormtroopers. That'll do. <laughs> they did. <laughs> okay. Yeah, as the guns just... <laughs> and zot them. <laughs> Sorry, just... You, you can kind of hear, hear on comms. Did I hit them? And the things behind them. Yeah, I think you got them. <laughs> That was the Stormtrooper squad that hadn't had chance to aim yet. They were just moving out to draw another bead on Agatha when, yeah, you zotted them uh, from the ship. It is back to the top of initiative then. First player character to go. Prinkle and Co. 
yeah, they are taking cover, having been shot, because all of their weapons are, are again, are reasonably short range, and they just can't see anything through the snow. And the only thing they can see through the snow at the moment is Agatha, in between them and then these bolts coming out, so they, they don't really want to risk blasting Agatha. So yeah, they're diving for cover, especially also having seen Throm get taken down. They're snapping off a few shots into the snow, but not with any meaningful effect. Okay. My suggestion for the top of this order is Agatha dives for cover and Lassa shoots at the other squad. Feel free to tell me to go again. I think you should go again. How many are left? There's one more squad of snowtroopers that are hunkered down. They're the ones that shot um, Agatha. And there's four of them? Yeah. Take them. Oberon again, I think, and then Mim can have another go before they get a go. Mm Mm-hmm. And what range are they to me now? They are medium range to you, so it's two purple, two setback. I'll spend a manoeuvre to aim. Okay, so that's three successes, including one four success, and four advantage. So that's a crit. For the crit, can I have taken something out on their utility belt, causing it to go boom? Yeah, I suppose. It's going to have the same mechanical effect, which is between the crit and your shot, two of the squad are down. But if you, that's how you want to flavour, then by all means. There's a moment where I'm about to take off his head, and I just go, oh... And then, like, take out the grenade that's by his belt, and it just goes off and it's next to his mate as well. So there's a bang. Yes, next player character. That's it. Yeah, this is this is risky though, because again, I remind you, I have no skills. One purple, two setback. Can you use your move to aim with it this time? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, which will give you a boost. I'll try aiming this time, shall I? <laughs> I mean, last time, that, you know, <laughs> that didn't go so well. You only took out all of them. <laughs> Lassa, you've not turned on your targeting computer. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's one success and two advantage. Well, the success is enough to take out the other group because, you know, starship weapons do bad <laughs> things to people. They do. I have found that in the other game. Pew, 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 pew. So that takes out the other squad and you've still got some advantage to spend. So what does that look like? What do you want to do with your advantage? the urge to try and find somewhere to start a convenient avalanche on the off chance that it will get something or someone. Are there any other targets or suspicious looking things? No? Not up here. It looks like this was one of the squads that was being communicated with that are kind of scattered around the area. I guess they're going to have to probably stay as bouncing boosts from the hype of oh my gosh I just fired a massive ship's gun and I've not done that before and everything went boom you get some strain back oh yeah yeah I, I, I'm down two strain I'll spend one to get some strain back you can spend two to get two strain back if you want yeah alright let's do it. back to full strain it's just easy boosts are handy but that, that's quite helpful and then she's going to uh, to saunter down in a slightly well it was a trap well we knew that Jiren st- stands up turns to the people who were expendable and says, okay, you're not coming in. You need to guard our escape. Prinkle, you're in charge. No, I am coming. They will shoot you dead. Then they will shoot me dead. I told you on the stopover. I will be here when we get Pijak. I am not being left behind this time. I can look after myself. I am armed and I am armed and I am with my friends. Our faith in each other will get us through. I will not be left behind this time. I know you are scared for me, but I will not be left behind. Adam? Yes. Does he, I mean, he seems resolute. There's nothing we can, we could do to, I'd have to make him stay, right? Pretty, I mean, you, you can. I mean, I can make him, make him get back on the ship if I want to. Yeah. But uh, you can try to talk him round if you want. No, we don't have the time. Or you can, you can influence him to make him stay. We don't have the time, but it does cross his mind. Okay, you're staying. You three? Back to the ship, get on the guns. I want somebody in the pilot seat. If anything else comes in behind us, you do what Lassa just did just then. Aye, aye, Captain. Adam, I, I've gone over to where the officer was. Mm-hmm. I've picked up the officer's comms. Yeah. And then I've thrown it at one of the crew and gone, listen to that. From your description, the, the, there's a massive hole in that helmet as well. There is, yeah. <laughs> See, I was thinking of like a little hand comb, but you're right, it's the helmet. I've just yeah. taken the blown helmet <laughs> off and thrown it at him. <laughs> ah! in, in a high Roy. Roy esque. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to trust you with the ship. Please keep in mind, I have one or two interesting things going on with these engines, so if you think about leaving without us, be wary. This is your last chance, remember? 
It's fine. Where are yours, Captain? I look towards From. I'm fairly sure he's not going to do anything against me at the moment. Nope. Not <laughs> at all. Yeah, so we're good. Has any of the Stormtroopers' equipment survived? Because I'd like to pick up one of those stun guns. <laughs> the rifles have, yeah. They are rifles with multi-optic kind of snow sights. I'm going to pick up one of the stun rifles. They're a bit cumbersome, but yeah, you can you can grab one of the um, the blast rifles if you want. Yeah, I'm less worried about cumbersome. I'm more worried about I don't want to get hit by one of the stuns again. I'd like to try and recover some strain as soon as possible as well. As soon as you kind of get somewhere where you can sit down and take a breath out of the storm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, you're not too far away now from the, the entrance to Pyjack's house. So... One of us has already rushed over and grabbed the helmet, so you know, we're just outside. We'll wait until the three have got back in the ship, and we're closer together as we're walking in. Yeah, the gangplank comes up behind them. We're going in through the front, back, or through the side? There's only really one entrance, isn't there? Apart from the, um, the way out where the cold fire is. We can make entrances. We can. Um, I just want to mention something, if this is all right with you. Theron was dead. What? He didn't look dead a moment ago. Yeah, he was dead. Pretty talkative for a corpse, by the I know. Theron was dead. Now he is not. As in, he was temporarily unrevivable and you used stims and drugs to bring him back? No. No, no. I used my mind to bring him back to life. I'm not telling you this as a boast. I'm telling you this because I am scared by that power. Yeah, let's talk about that later, eh? Uh, I'm not completely sure that we're ready for a deep theological conversation about, you know... I'm not talking about this as a deep theological conversation. But we will get through this. We will get through this. Death can't stop us. Not now. All right. He looks kind of a little insane. You know? Just a little bit. Kind of like, I brought somebody back from the dead. Ho, 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 ho. Now I'm not scared by the fact that I might lose somebody. And it's it's worrying. Well, if the choice comes and we have to shoot Pijak to get him out of here safely, and we can bring him back later, now we have more options. I don't think it's a later sort of thing, and it is horrible reaching into wherever they were. It is a last resort. Yes. Always good to have options. Yeah. Well, can, can I ask a quick question of the group, then? Mr. Power of a God and Mr. Hitty Things and Mr. Shooty Things. Are these rifles any better than my pistol? Yes. All right. Not sure I've got enough hours to carry all of this. Can I strap the shooty net gun to my backpack and carry a rifle, or am I going to be massively encumbered? No, yeah, you, you can do that. You're not carrying too much of the stuff, so... All right, so I've got the rifle equipped and ready to go, and everything else is tacked on. Right. After you, guard. <sighs> a bit damn for other never brought anybody back from the dead. Let's go. Leaving the smoking craters and scattered snowtroopers behind, you get to the door to Pijak's apartment. If I recall correctly, it was a bunker with a door and then effectively ladders leading down to his habitation, which was underground where it was a bit warmer and more insulated from the cold. It's locked, but the code doesn't appear to have changed. The door clicks open. From down like the ladder, you can see there is light down here. I glance over. Has Agatha got a handful of grenades? Yeah, he's got grenades to hand. He's also got a stun gun. Are they actually in his hands? I imagine, yeah, he'll have a grenade in his hand. That's all right, then. Because if they weren't, I would have taken some. <laughs> he's a bit more prepared this time. Let's take have one in hand and a stun gun to fire. I mean, I dare say there's a decent chance he will throw the stun gun at someone as well. But and fire the grenade. I mean, I say stun gun. It's a full-size rifle, blaster rifle. It's just that it has a stun setting on it. Yeah, most rifles have stun settings. Yeah. Yeah, if you hit someone around the head with it, they get stunned. It's a similar size and set up to Oberon's. It's a proper big, you know, five foot long blaster rifle with very complicated, fiddly looking sights on it. Yeah, Agatha's thinking at the minute is, well, if I fire the stun setting, the victim will still be alive. We can deal with them a bit later. It's totally a valid call. I'm just saying it's not like a little like Zot Zot stun pistol. It's a full-size rifle that just happens to have a stun setting on it. You know, the stuff that stormtroopers carry. Yeah. I'm having a look in the room through the scope on my rifle. There doesn't appear to be any welcoming committee waiting for you down there. Although it does look from what little you can kind of see down and into what used to be Pyjax's front room that it's been trashed. He enters cautiously with uh, his eye down the scope and make an unambiguous hand gesture to, for everyone to move in. Yeah. You head in. 
from a massive amount of character growth and learning, I do not walk in casually and walk past him down the, the thing. It's hard, but I don't. You are in Pijak's, what used to be Pijak's front room, and it has been trashed. And it looks like it's been trashed by a lightsaber. It's old devastation because some dust has settled over it, but it looks like the furniture was carved up. You can see through into what used to be his kitchen and into his bedroom, and they have all been carved up. And you can see the hidden stairway that led down, down into the various caverns and catacombs underneath Pijak's dwelling to where his meditation chamber is, to where the cold fire's mercy is stored. And that door is ajar. This is terrible. This is completely... I mean, who gives a toddler a lightsaber? Because this is what it looks like to me. It looks like just pointless. pointless no sense anger. of control. No. As a question, does it sound like the power generator is on? Because we had issues with that when we were yeah. last here. Yeah, the power generator is on. There, there is light and warmth down here. Okay. But again, some of the bulbs have gone. But it looks like they've just gone. The bulbs themselves, it doesn't look like Tenth Brother has taken a lightsaber to the to the lights. It just looks like the natural attrition. It's been a while since you were here. And I think as you kind of get down here and the warmth starts to sink, you seep in from the life support, as you look around at the shattered ruins of your mentor's home, that is where I'm going to end it for this week. Thank you, everybody. We are getting towards the end, I feel. There is a great sense of momentum, certainly from behind the screen. And before we leave you, this episode's patron is Rich Keller. Rich is a very old friend of mine, an even older friend of Mikey's. And though we don't really see you as much as we used to anymore, it is really good to know that you're enjoying listening to this nonsense and being with us on this journey. Thank you so much for the support and your patronage. It really does mean a lot to us. You look after yourself, Chief, and the family. And indeed, the rest of you look after yourselves as well. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. Look after yourselves and one another because no one else is going to do it for us. Be well, my friends, and we will see you all next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our intro music for this season is Unholy Night by Kevin MacLeod, and our outro music remains Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale, both used with gratitude under the Creative Commons license. If you like the show and want to interact with us, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram, all of which are at Force Majeure Pod though Twitter is probably where you're going to find us more regularly. If you enjoy what we do and want to support the show, there's three ways you can do that. The first is via our Patreon at patreon.com slash forcemajeurepod. The second is by buying us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash forcemajeurepod. And the third way is by rating and reviewing us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, anywhere where you can find us. We really like reviews. It tells us that we're telling the stories that you want to hear and helps other people find us. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time.